Welcome back, everyone, to our December hashtag HireMe2021 guest panel speaker series hosted by bcjobs.ca. My name is Chelsea Sweeney, the director of events for BC Jobs, and I'll be your host today. Every month, we have three special guest speakers from various sectors join us for a QA and a on what's new with their organizations and to talk a bit about the job market and hiring. As you may know, BC Jobs is Western Canada's biggest online jobs board. And in addition to this guest speaker series, we also offer annual career fairs. Our next one will be in 2022. You can also check out our Innovators podcast to hear more about what industry leaders are saying. All right, so before we get started here today, I want to encourage the audience to type your questions for the panel speakers into the chat box at any point, and we will get to your questions during our Q&A. Today, we'll be offering a pitch event uh, right before we start the audience Q&A. And if you've been to any of our previous um, guest speaker panels, we have a, a, a pitch event right in the middle of our panel where uh, we encourage the audience to um, give a 30 second pitch to our guest speakers here. So the 30 second pitch can include anything about yourself, your skills, your job experience, or what you're, what kind of work you're looking for if you're looking to change careers, for example. And the person with the best pitch will receive a 30 minute resume consultation with me. Um, so I'll remind you all again when it's time for a pitch event and I'll tell you how to, to uh, submit your name. Okay, so we'll get some introductions for our guest uh, speakers going here. I'm gonna pass the virtual mic over to Bayer Kai, co-founder and CTO at Commit. They are welcome to our panel. Please tell us a little about yourself. Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. And uh, Chelsea, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Bear. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Commit. So personally, I've been uh, working in the software, software industry for about 15 years now, always working in the startup ecosystem, you know, where you know, I was the first engineer at uh, a local startup called Hootsuite and uh, worked with them for, for, for quite a while. I wrote the first line of code and became a chief architect and then uh, also become and later on became a senior management um, and uh, spent about nine years there. So after nine years, I missed the startup world and then uh, I moved on and started a company. And about two years later, the company got acquired by, uh, by a New York business, spent about half a year with the parent, parent company, flying back and forth New York and Vancouver and decided that's too much travel for me. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not moving to New York for sure. So uh, so yeah, I decided to move on and uh, yeah, started uh, a new journey, which is uh, commit. So so personally, my passion has always been uh, kind of building product and technology, but also helping engineers. So, you know, when I was in the management position at Hootsuite, I just always had uh, fun seeing through engineers' career growth. And then at the same time, I organized about a dozen uh, uh, tech meetup groups in Vancouver, you know, at peak time doing one or two events uh, uh, per week. So so I think, you know, that passion, you know, led me to, you know, kind of having this kind of happy marriage between <laughs> building a startup and helping engineers. So what Commit is all about is uh, a professional community for startup software engineers, you know, where engineers joining the community, you know, get opportunities to uh, be, be leveled up, you know, upskill, um, also getting uh, exposure to, you know, startup opportunities that in our portfolio, and uh, also just having a network of, you know, great people who can help the engineer, you know, to, to, to continue to learn and grow, right? So, uh, so that's kind of um, the community we're building out. Yeah, so that's about myself and Commit. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing, Bayer. It's great to know more about Commit and to hear about your jet setting life back in the day. Vancouver to New York, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Vancouver for the win, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up we have Casey Bain, CMO at Pocketed. Casey, tell us a bit about your background and what brought you to Pocketed. Excellent. So uh, great to meet all of you. And uh, yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, so like Chelsea mentioned, my name is Casey Bain and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Pocketed. Um, much like Bear, I have a love for the startup world. I've been working in tech marketing for um, just over 15 years now. Um, I'm originally from Toronto, but now uh, moved out uh, here to Vancouver. 
and have worked for a, just a variety of different startups um, in the city, um, leading their marketing teams and really specializing in B2B SaaS software. And it is so exciting to work um, with different startup companies and Pocketed is a great example of this. Um, we are just over a year old and really being able to be part of that founding team and being able to, along with um, the leadership team, as well as all of the folks on the team, to really be able to build something from the ground up, do a lot of experimentation and testing. Um, I'm big on like marketing analytics and all of that kind of stuff. So have a lot of fun doing that. And uh, when I'm not at Pocketed, um, I also teach digital marketing at BrainStation. So if you have any questions about um, like certificate courses or those kind of things with organizations like BrainStation, happy to answer questions there. And a little bit about Pocketed, you can find more about us at hellopocketed.io. You can sign up for free. We made a code just for this event, which is BC Jobs. I'll post it in the chat as well. But basically, we make it super easy for companies to find grant funding that is specific to their business. So if you've ever applied for a grant or like a scholarship, those worlds are kind of very similar. It's hard to know what applies to you. Hard to know like all of those little hidden gems. So with Pocketed, you can put in all the qual qualifiers for your business. Um, if you're like a female founder, if you're in agriculture, whatever qualities about your business, and it'll show you the grants that, that are personalized for your company. So um, our company itself is largely grant funded and to be able to help other companies do that is uh, just amazing and really fulfilling. That sounds so exciting, Casey. And it must be amazing to, to be with a company and see it grow from the ground up. Like what an exactly. amazing journey. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. And then last but not least, we'll uh, move over here to Ragwa Gopal, the CEO at Innovate BC. Ragwa, please tell us a bit about your backstory. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Chelsea. Thank you for having me here. And uh, so, uh, so happy to be sharing this with the bear and uh, and Casey Hootsuite, what, what, what a great uh, a local success story. I'm pretty sure Commit would be, uh, uh, you know, same, a similar success as well. <laughs> and, and Casey, uh, you know, you're doing some great stuff and we're very happy to, uh, you know, support you and, and, and partner wherever we can. You're doing some amazing work. So uh, glad to be on this panel with, with you both. Uh, from my point of view, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Innovate BC um, in, in a few minutes. Uh, you know, we're a crown corporation of the uh, province of British Columbia reporting to Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. And with Minister Ravi Callon is doing some amazing work uh, is the minister that we uh, that we report to, so uh, you all are here. You know, I'm I'm very glad to be you know participating in this. I think very relevant uh, um, webinar. As far as my uh, background, I've kind of lived uh, all my working life uh, in the startup world as well. Actually, I uh, you know came uh, software engineering background, uh, born, raised, and educated uh, in Fiji Islands, and then happened to um, land in Kelowna about 43 years ago. And um, and I had to basically uh, almost uh, you know create a business for myself with a, with an amazing co-founder that uh, that I happened to found, find there. So we you know started the very first uh, uh, technology or software company in the Okanagan uh, in 1979. Uh, grew that uh, grew grew it. Yeah, sold it first. You know my first exit was in 2001. And uh, since then, I've been uh, very actively uh, on a personal level, um, in, you know, in uh, working in this space, working, you know, mainly volunteering in the space of, um, of startups and uh, mentoring youth uh, or uh, new uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, and um, also, uh, you know, being an angel investor in about 50 uh, different ideas. So just kind of wow. providing them with a bit of money so people can at least realize their dreams, you know, and uh, even if, even if what they were trying to do didn't, um, you know, become a huge success, you know, every iteration of what they did uh, helped them uh, learn more and get better. So um, and that was kind of what drove me uh, to take on this lead role at Innovate BC, because what I was doing kind of personally on a volunteer basis uh, really aligned with all of the work that Innovate BC does. So uh, here I am. Um, you know, if you look at Kelowna, is a it's just a, you know, a simple example of uh, you know how we can change or transform communities and lives 
1979 in Cologne, there was no uh, software technology company. <laughs> Our whole economy was based on agriculture mm -hmm. and tourism we was starting to, uh, to grow a bit, not, not as much. And uh, so we started one company with two folks today, I don't know, about 40 some years later, you know, I've really helped grow that uh, ecosystem to have over 1,000 you know, tech companies residing in, in the Okanagan, about 13, wow. more than 13,000 people working in this, uh, in the digital uh, economy there. And, and the tech and innovation economy is, is contributing over $2 billion to the local economy. So it's become the largest economy in the Okanagan, surpassing agriculture, which has been the bread and butter and, and tourism, which was start, which was growing very, very much uh, over the last uh, you know, 30 years. So it's, it's a transformed place. And I'm, I'm so proud and, and happy that I'm uh, now, you know, have a bit of, uh, uh, you know, leeway to be able to do that uh, province-wide. So thank you for having me here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, very interesting to hear about technology now leading over agriculture in, in the Okanagan. I had no idea about that. I mean, I know technology is leading here in, in the lower mainland, but uh, that's great to hear that the Okanagan's having its own boom. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so now that we know our panelists a little bit better, I've got a few of my own questions that I'm going to start us off with before we move over to the pitch event and our audience Q&A. These next questions are geared more towards mentorship and exciting new projects, but I've also thrown in a couple questions that I wanted to know about your companies. I'll start off with Bayer. So I'm probably just repeating what you said earlier, Bear, but Commit, which is a professional network founded by software developers that puts the career needs of startup engineers first, offers an engineering partner program. Tell us a bit more about this program and how this mentorship benefits engineers growing in their careers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, I think per, as, as I mentioned already, um, personally, I've been kind of navigating in the startup space as an engineer you know, for, for, for over a decade. And uh, along the way, you know, through my community engagement, I've also met lots of, lots, of, lots of engineers out there. And one of the key challenges for startup engineers is it's just really hard to build a, try to build a successful career in the space. You know, there's a lot of financial risk, obviously, right? You know, compared with working at Google, Facebook, you know, the big companies out there. And it's also very hard for engineers, you know, to, to have access to great opportunities out there. You know, normally engineers will just work at a company through a friend or apply a job board at a bigger company. And as we all know, early stage startups, they usually hire within their network, right? So it's very hard to have access to great opportunities. And then uh, there's all these interview, crazy amount of interviews that people have to do, super stressful, sometimes even nonsense, like, you know, <laughs> like this whole, this entire experience, right? And then imagine you join a company and then uh, on a startup small team, you got stuck with, with, with something. And unlike Google, you can type on someone's shoulder, get help in a small setting. Who do you get help? Like where do you get help, right? So anyways, we put them all these together. It's just really hard to build a, start, a startup um, career, right? For software engineers. And then, uh, yeah, so I think those are the problems that became really clear to me in terms of, you know, like, impactful and urgent you know that's mm -hmm. that's i felt you know innovation needs people like this i don't want to see all of those smart people joining amazon you know? <laughs> like, i mean nothing wrong with those big companies but when, when, when they pay so much and you, you're and then you're mm -hmm. seeing all the talents joining the big companies and then you see all the start the startups working on great projects they have a really hard time finding you know great talent that just became a uh, painful to me Mm -hmm. right. So anyways, so so long story short, that's when uh, we launched Commit. And our goal is really just eliminate all the risks and frictions, you know, for engineers. So so our engineering partner program, you know, we hire engineers directly into Commit and we pay them, you know, full-time salary. Um, and so 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 that they have the financial stability, right? And then uh, we source and uh, vet high quality startups in North America, Vancouver, Toronto, San Francisco, New York, Boston. And then we partner with all the major VCs to get the, all the early stage startups in, right? Then we match the engineers with, uh, with the startup opportunities to make sure there's a really good kind of a starting point. 
And then our engineers can uh, try out different startups for three months, each for three months until they find a perfect fit for their for long term. Then they can join them for, for long term, right? And if the company startup, right, you know, it's a numbers game, you know, nine out of 10 fails. If if the company they joined didn't work out, they will come back to commit the next morning, you know, pick up the paycheck from us. We pair them up with the next startup right away. And in the meanwhile, for a few weeks, you know, we continue to provide training program to level them up, right? Yeah, so so I think, you know, this is something we've been doing for the past two years and, you know, we've helped, we successfully help dozens of engineers graduating from the commit program. And uh, yeah, so we are looking for helping more and more engineers to go through this program to find the next big win. It sounds like a fantastic initiative for engineers. Uh, I applaud you, that's awesome. And yeah, thanks for thanks shedding, for shedding more light on your engineering partner program. So anybody listening today, check out Commit's engineering partner program. Okay, my next question here is for Ragwa. Um, Innovate BC is an organization that connects innovators, um, both large and small, with BC government funding, tools, resources, and support. What sort of tools, resources, and support do you offer innovators? Are mentors and coaches offered as support? Yeah, thanks. Uh, great question. Actually, uh, we uh, we offer there's three lines of uh, support or programs, I guess that uh, that we deliver. So we deliver programs that are uh, in talent development, in uh, tech adoption for businesses. So talent development is mainly for uh, you know people that are uh, uh, looking to um, you know get hired in a in a work integrated learning process or what. what trying to uh, enhance the skills a little bit. So that's the talent side. Tech adoption is more geared to businesses where they um, may need to, um, you know, um, use more technology, maybe, you know, get more digitized, et cetera. So some programs in, in relation to uh, uh, tech uh, adoption. And then we do a lot in the, in the mentorship uh, as well. So me mentorship side. So we provide mm -hmm. a lot of mentorship, mentorship to uh, innovators all across the province. We have a network of 10 uh, uh, accelerators and incubators that we support. Uh, six of them are regionally, regionally located in Nanaimo, Victoria, Prince George, Kamloops, Kelowna and Trail. And awesome. then we have and then we have uh, accelerators in uh, at uh, UBC, uh, in, uh, at Simon Fraser University, and also we uh, support a uh, clean tech accelerator called Foresight. And all of these accelerators and accelerators provide uh, a lot of mentorship, uh, uh, but they provide much more than mentorship, but mm -hmm. mentorship is sort of the, the programs that we actually fund and support. On the uh, talent development side, you know, we have currently, um, we have two major programs that we're running. Uh, the first one is a uh, $29 million, so $30 million program it's called Innovator Skills Initiative that um, we're providing 3,000 placements uh, at $10,000 each uh, for okay. students to get hired. So this is more in the work integrated learning, uh, focuses on diversity and inclusion, but any employer that wants to hire a post-secondary uh, post, uh, secondary, uh, post uh, post the secondary uh, student and will provide that employer with $10,000 to cover the cost of that four or six month term. So it makes it easier for employers to hire, covers a little bit of the onboarding cost. The other program is a little bit more comprehensive. It's called Digital Skills for Youth, where we provide the employees up to six months of the um, employee's uh, salary and we'll also provide up to $5,000 in training cost and some additional um, funds to uh, cover for any expenses that the employee may need to get training with their travel, accommodation, meals, et cetera. So the whole uh, program you know, for one employee, you know, we, we would cover up to about $35,000 in costs. So 26,000 in salaries and um, roughly $10,000 in training costs. So if they wanted to go to say brain station or someplace to get uh, a little bit more training and it's a $5,000 cost, we'll cover that. So those are sort of the two uh, large programs that we uh, do in the, um, in the talent development. On tech adoption side, normally we've kind of worked within the tech industry, but uh, due to the pandemic uh, in the last couple of years, we've run programs where we've just gone out to um, any, any business uh, that needed help to get into the digital stage is, you know, in, in terms of you know, having a website if they didn't have one, if, if they had a website, if they didn't have an ordering uh, process or delivery mechanisms or, or they didn't have you know, e-commerce to take payments, et cetera. 
um, or scheduling and booking. So we'll provide that kind of service and better funding to for the businesses to get uh, into the digital space. And then uh, on the, on the mentorship side, like I talked about, uh, the um, the organizations New Ventures VC again, you probably all know. Most of you probably heard and know is another you know uh, partner of ours that. Uh, provides amazing amount of mentorship, um, uh, a lot virtually, but then it kind of culminates into a uh, um, awards presentation and top three, usually the top three to five uh, companies that uh, you know, are doing very well would end up winning uh, a non, you know, just a grant uh, money of anywhere from $100,000 to uh, you know, $20,000, depending on where they, uh, they end up uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the competition. Um, those sort of are uh, sort of the, uh, generally the, the program. I'm happy to, uh, to share the link uh, to Innovate BC's website. It's got all the information into some of the specific programs as well. And I'm happy to answer and go into a lot of details. Uh, you know, we run 12, uh, 10 programs right now, so I don't want to spend all the time kind of just <laughs> programs. But if somebody is interested in any specific one, I can dive um, a little bit more into that. So I'll leave Thank it. So much, yeah, it's great to hear that Innovate BC has many programs for students and youth and offers like a, a lot of financial support, it sounds like. So these are these are some great initiatives that I think our listeners will be particularly interested in today. So thank you, thank I you for sharing. I think it's very relevant to everybody's on, the, on, on this call. Yeah, okay, uh, over to Casey. Pocketed helps businesses in Canada and the USA easily access billions of dollars every year in grant funding and tax credits. You've just raised one million in seed funding to eliminate financial barriers for entrepreneurs. Tell us a bit more about this. Sounds very exciting. Yeah, so it has been an exciting few months as we got um, our first uh, batch of funding um, only a few months into the company. And what that has really allowed us to do is to go beyond kind of like our initial um, algorithm and our initial kind of group of grants and really expand into different areas. One of the things that's so interesting um, is um, I know some of my co-panelists have mentioned like changes during the pandemic as well, is like most of our founders, you know, have worked with lots of um, tech companies, but we're finding companies from all kinds of different industries coming to Pocketed for, to find access for grant funding for, you know, research and development, international expansion, manufacturing. Um, a lot of COVID grants came out um, from various government levels and different industry associations at the beginning of the, of the year. So we're making it easier for companies to find access to things like that. We've also been able to um, add in more customization so that uh, if there is a grant that is relevant to your business, you'll get notified about it right away um, with our new um, Pocketed Plus features that we just Ooh. launched a couple of months ago. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and also just offering more services and kind of understanding um, so how can we help our customers um, and how can we help business owners apply for more grants, whether they're like a one person startup or they're, you know, 150 people who's, um, you know, heads of department that might be uh, focused on looking into grants and funding opportunities, training for their teams and that kind of thing. Um, so we offer more services where we'll actually write the grant application for you and we will manage that whole process because we know people are busy most people are doing you know five people's jobs at one time so to be able to take that off of your plate and um really like run through the whole application process for you has been something that our customers have really loved and really enjoyed and we've been able to get millions of dollars for our customers in funding in just a few days um, we work a lot with uh, our friends at Innovate BC and their grant programs that they run. Um, and so many of our team is uh, is grant funded as well. We have lots of great students and new grads and people from underrepresented groups that we're able to not just bring into the pocketed team, but to be able to help our customers hire more people and uh, get help to achieve their goals as well. Wow, that's so exciting. And that's great. You're already working with Innovate VC. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> happy, to, so happy to see Casey do this because like it's, there's so many programs out there and sometimes companies yeah. like students go through this process and they forget it. I just can't figure it out. And having pocketed now that can sift through that help you is fantastic. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, excellent. And grant writing is like, a, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead there. Oh, no, I, I just want to say, you know, how 
how important all these grants have been, you know, for the for, for the ecosystem, right? And having companies like Pocketed, you know, to help people fit, navigate the complex kind of system is really it's really important as well. I, I like I, I I don't know if you if if you know, but Hootsuite was actually born out of a, of a grant, right? From, oh, I love that! Uh, oh, wow! Yeah, yeah, like no the, way. The, yeah, the the initial work was founded by um you know by IRAP, right? Right, and, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, for my company, Commit, the or the first half a year, you know, the grant actually played a key role. Like uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without the initial grant from you know IRAP and then later on Shred and then mm-hmm. also uh, from BDC. So 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 that kind of yeah give us a lot of energy, you know, and the yeah. feel. You know, to to, to that survive kickoff. the first year, right? So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and Definitely. I think it's so interesting. Like a lot of companies, um, whether you're starting your own company or you know, there's a few of you together. Like you think that the only way is you know bank loans or like BC funding, but there are so many other options, and there are some great government and like industry programs to really help people start businesses and really like encourage people to you know grow their businesses, whether you're in Canada or in the US, there are lots of different options um, to help, which is so, so amazing. (laughs) And to have, um, you know, uh, our team has specialists in all kinds of different grant areas. Um, Some of them, uh, like Bayer mentioned, IRAP and Shred are a little more complicated, but we have people (laughs) who specialize in that as well, so that you can focus on doing your job and growing your company and then kind of bring in those experts to help um, fund your business without taking away like ownership that you have in your company or taking on, you know, a giant bank loan. For sure. And it's, it's great to know that Pocketed, um, that your team at Pocketed writes the grant proposals because that can be a, like a full-time job in itself. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and it's hard navigating through that, I imagine. So that's a great service that you provide. Thank you. Okay, back over to Abair. I've got another question for you. So I heard that Commit raised six million earlier this year to match senior engineers to startups. What types of startups does Commit work with? Yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned early on, you know, we have this like one of the core programs that we have is uh, engineering partner program, where you know we actually hire engineers to be matched with uh, startup opportunities. So, so we work with a pretty broad range of startup opportunities that usually ranges between uh, a pre-seed, uh, like very, very early stage. Essentially, they have an idea, the founders have an idea, they validated some ideas through, you know, no code solution, right? Like Airtable, Notion, Spreadsheet, and they're ready to build software to hire the first engineer, right? So from that stage, um, but they do, had some initial funding in place and then all the way to a series a, a series a so uh, so so that's the kind of range of startups startups we work with different industry you know definitely lots of fintech healthcare mm-hmm. education you know blockchain cryptocurrency cool. a lot of the the kind of, kind of yeah like uh, like uh, i'm not uh, 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 some of you might heard of uh, dapper dapper labs in in vancouver oh so, i've heard of them yeah 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 so uh, so so they recently launched the NBA, NBA top shot, you know, which became like a, which just like ex- exploded, you know, from nothing to a, a billion dollar business within a year. Wow. Wow. And uh, yeah, one of their first engineers actually came from Commit. So, so which is Excellent. really, really cool story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I think, you know, um, different range of startups. Um, so, so what happens is usually those startups are, were introduced to us through our VC partner. So we partner mm-hmm. with major VCs, seed stage VCs in North America. And so they, they become the first li- line of vetting called quality control to make sure only the high quality startups comes in. And then, uh, then we also have our internal VC like team, essentially team fr- coming from mm-hmm. the VC background to do another level of vetting to make sure, you know, not only the business Foundable by the VCs, but also the founders, the culture, you know, the uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, like the remote kind of kind of practice, you know. For example, like we actually only work with remote startups, you know. That's oh, the future okay. we are betting on, yeah. and uh, yeah. So so are they remote friendly or remote only? And uh, uh, are the founders, you know, trying to build a culture that's highly collaborative, mm-hmm. um, other than you know building a sweatshop, for example. <laughs> You know, yeah. So, so we 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 also vet a lot of the kind of the quality that we believe in mm-hmm. from the founder, from the team, and uh, yeah, once they kind of are vetted, 
and then they got into our program, then we start matching them with um uh with our engineers. So Excellent. yeah, so that's kind of yeah, that that's kind of the that's kind of the, the type of startups we work with. We have we've turned down probably like more than half of the applicants who, who oh, want to join wow. us. Yeah, yeah. There's there's absolutely way more demand than supply mm -hmm. in, in terms of talent. <laughs> so so it's pretty yeah. easy to, for us to say no to startups, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is really nice because I'm I'm tired of saying no to engineers. I want to say mm -hmm. more no to startups, right? Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's really good. Yeah. And I think just one, one last thing I want to add to is in terms of the mentorship program is you know, mentorship, mentorship is absolutely critical, essential to our program as well, in terms of um, you know, once our engineers try different startups and they get to join a startup full time, later on, you know, we continue to provide mentorship, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this peer-to-peer -peer network where, you know, first of all, mentorship is not always like senior to junior. You know, you can have two senior people mentoring each other because they are both right. strong at certain aspect of uh, software development, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that applies to all, right? Also, the second aspect is being a mentor is also a great learning opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Like someone being a, a mentor, that's actually, you know, a, a great opportunity for you to build the leadership skill, to help mm -hmm. other people, right? So I think, you know, because of that, we're able to set up a mentorship network within our community where, you know, people are just kind of helping each other out, you know, along the, along the career journey, right? So, so that's really, really cool. But yeah, so I just want to, you know, uh, mention that, you know, to encourage, you know, uh, everybody to either mentor someone mm -hmm. or find a mentor, right? Or do both. <laughs> Yeah, peer mentoring sounds excellent too, like sharing skills, uh, you know, amongst your peers, like, you know, you can't beat that as well. Yeah. So that's, yeah, these are, these are great opportunities. And I just wanted to clarify um, for the startups that you work with, they're all, are they all Canadian or do you work with startups in other countries like the US? Yeah, it's uh, it's North American based. Yeah, we definitely okay. have a lot of uh, Vancouver based and Toronto. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 essentially location doesn't matter to us anymore. Mm -hmm. It's because, remote. <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned, you know, we only work with either remote friendly or remote only startups, right? Okay. So it's uh, pretty much all on the same time zone. Cool. Very. Yeah, cool. Sorry, like same, like not like a Pan America time zone. Let's, let me Pan put it. Okay, <laughs> just limited <laughs> to like yeah, the, the side yeah, of the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, my next question is for Ragwa. Um, what's 2022 looking like in terms of new projects and initiatives that you're offering for innovators? I've noticed that you've got your own hiring board available online. Are you targeting specific job roles with this job board or um, are you helping with job placement? Yeah, so uh, this. Uh, thank you for bringing that up actually, the job board. Uh, this is, this is not something that we want to um, you know, create to uh, you know, replace something that's already there or agencies that actually uh, you know, find uh, match employers and employees. So this, is, was, this was born out of this uh, last uh, couple of um, the uh, talent uh, granting programs that we have where we have to you know, provide 3,000 grants to students. Um, or postgraduate students, and then the digital skills for youth. So what we were finding was we had employers reached out and um, said, I want to hire five people. And they would uh, you know, fill in all the, the applications and uh, you know, it, it, they, we would approve those uh, grants for these employers to go hire five people and they'd get uh, in, in the ISI, Innovative Schools Initiative Program, $10,000 each. And then they were, we, we were finding students that would uh, go to our website and apply and say, you know, I'm, I am eligible uh, for this particular program and I'm looking for X, Y, you know, I have digital marketing skill or I want to learn digital mas marketing skill or software engineering or, uh, you know, UX, UI design or something like that. So we, we had a, a list of hundreds of uh, students that were looking um, to meet with the employers. And, and this wasn't happening at the pace that we wanted to. So we had this database of students that were looking for placements. We had all of these employers that were looking for people, but nobody was matching them. So this job board actually, what we're trying to do here is basically saying to the employees, here are all of the people that are looking with this kind of skill set. You know, you don't need to go look anyway, just kind of see if it matches, you know, start talking to them. And same to, with the 
with the uh, with the people that are seeking jobs to say here these are the employees that are looking for the one two five ten people and these are skill set that they're looking for you know we, we can match you so that was the reason for creating that and uh, starting to have some good traction so we're hoping that uh, as we do more granting programs you know the easier we uh, make it for for them the better like pocket it you know really streamline the process like instead of spending days and applying you know 30 different grant programs where you're only probably eligible for one or two you know so you spend 28 grant writing that probably doesn't yield you anything you know they've kind of fixed that so they will kind of look at it they have all the knowledge and they'll they'll guide you to say these are the only two you should focus on so that's that part is taken care of but the matching part isn't quite there yet so we will try to do this but we'll be happy to some, for somebody else to take this on so right now that's the reason why we created this Okay, very interesting. Good to know. Awesome. Okay, and my last question here is for Casey. Uh, is Pocketed helping entrepreneurs in other ways? Any exciting collaborations coming up in 2022? Yeah, so um, we have a lot of great uh, partnerships with the granting organizations um, like Innovate BC and quite a few others. But um, we work with a lot of businesses that don't just need help with grant funding, but need help with other areas in their businesses as well. So we've established some really great partnerships, one of which is with Good Lawyer, which helps people with contracts and legal advice and all things that you might go for a lawyer for, um, especially when you're a new company or, um, you know, even if you've been a startup that's been around for like five years might not actually have all that legal stuff sorted out. So to have people that understand um, grants and small business and entrepreneurship, having experts um, that we can connect you with there is super valuable. We also work with um, some other companies with like HR and employment contracts. Mm -hmm. I think it's so interesting um, what Regra mentioned about um, helping companies hire because that's what we're seeing as like a big challenge as well is that once they get the grants, a lot of companies don't know where to look to hire employees or even um, like what an employment contract looks like or how do you see if somebody is um, applicable for a grant without asking a bunch of questions that you're legally not allowed to ask and providing those kind of um, expertise and really just um, like uh, knowledge and that kind of thing for new businesses. A lot of the stuff that we've experienced not only in growing our own business at Pocketed, but in working with all of our customers and clients is figuring out, okay, it's not just um, grant funding, but it's like, what problems are you looking to solve in your business by getting this money? And how could we find additional resources or partners or other folks to connect to? So lots of exciting stuff coming um, in the new year. Um, wish I could tell you more right now, but uh, you will hear more from us in, uh, in no time soon. Oh, exciting. You, it sounds like you've got uh, some very interesting connections. You mentioned good, goodlawyer.com? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Good Lawyer is a, is a great company. Um, they really understand working with small businesses and they have a really, um, I'm going to say like startup friendly um, pricing model, because mm -hmm. if any of you have ever had to contact a lawyer for any reason, they can get very expensive very fast. So to have just a bit more of clarity around pricing and that kind of stuff is super valuable. Um, and our Pocketed Plus uh, membership gives you a discount in working with them too, which is really nice. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much, um, Bea, Ragwa, and Casey for answering all of my very probing questions. I'm sure our audience is wondering about the same questions that I've just asked. If not, we can get into some specific questions from the audience in a few minutes. Uh, but now we're going to turn over to our pitch event, and uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit about our pitch event here. Um, so the pitch event is essentially a chance for our audience to practice those rusty public speaking skills and, um, and get, they get to practice how to make themselves stand out to our guest panelists here to stand out and to shine. So if you want to join our pitch event, uh, I'm gonna get you to type your, here, I'll just type the instructions into the chat here. So I'm gonna get you to type your name, your location, your years of experience and your area of expertise into the chat. And then I'll just pick the first three people that type their name and, and the following information into the chat. And I'll invite you on screen so you can 
turn your microphone and camera on and you can give a 30 second pitch to our guest speakers here. Now there is a prize. So the person um, with the best pitch today will receive an email from me later on, uh, inviting you to a 30 minute resume consultation with me. So I've met with several uh, job candidates um, over the past few months and it's been really interesting to see everybody's resume and hear about their uh, experience and what kind of roles they're looking for. And I also uh, give, give some tips on how to improve your LinkedIn profile as well. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun uh, meeting with me. Don't worry, I'm not a scary person. And uh, it's, it's a great way to practice your public speaking skills. So feel free to type your name, your location, uh, years of experience and area of expertise into the chat box. And I'll just pick the first three people to come up and talk to our guest speakers today. So this is a 30 second um, pitch. So feel free, we have any courageous speakers today. I know it can be a little nerve wracking speaking in public. Oh, we have, we have Raul. Awesome, okay, anybody else who would like to give a pitch today? Okay, well, while we're waiting for other people to type in their names, let's invite Raul onto the screen. Feel free to, um, yeah, you've got your camera on. Excellent. You can uh, take turn on your microphone and give your 30 second pitch to our guest panelists. Thank you so much for volunteering yeah. yourself. Yeah, thank you. My name is Raul. Uh, I have more than 10 years of experience in IT and telecom uh, project and program management with different vendors and uh, operators like Nokia, Siemens, MTN. Uh, I'm based in Vancouver, just moved to Vancouver six months ago and um, looking for new opportunities. Uh, my best quality is people management and project management. I've been project manager and line manager both. And as I told you in vendors like Nokia, thank you. Cool, well done. Thank you so much for giving your pitch today. <laughs> Okay, do we have any other brave speakers who want to give a 30 second pitch about yourself? Just think of it as practice for those interviews you'll have coming up uh, in the future. I'll give me one more minute for anyone else to volunteer. Okay, we have Tuyen. Thank you for volunteering. All right, okay, your camera's on and your microphone's off. You are free to give your pitch to our guest speakers. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here today. So uh, my background is uh, is in retail and marketing, basically. So I have seven to eight years experience um, back in my home country. And then I've moved here for one and a half year uh, pursuing my MBA. And I would like to looking for a job in related fields like uh, retail and marketing. Uh, I'm really love to join startup company, but I just don't know how to connect with the um, connection. So would really happy to be mentored by one of our guests here today. Thank you. Thanks for that excellent pitch. And yeah, you, you chose the right panel to come to today because all three of our speakers are kind of like in the same similar like area. Um, it just, it kind of worked out that way. I didn't, I didn't pick our guest speakers. They were just free on this day. So great coincidence. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to our guest panelists after our panel today. If you have questions about how to join a startup or even how to create a startup, I'm sure they have, they'll give you tips um, and, and years of their expertise to, to give you. Okay, well, thank you so much to Raul and Tuyen for um, speaking to our guest uh, panel speakers today. So I'll take this opportunity to kind of open up the floor to um, any kind of Q and A um, questions. So if you have a question for one of our guest speakers or for all three of our guest speakers, feel free to, you can type your question into the chat or you can raise your hand on the side. I believe there were, some questions put in earlier. So I'm just going to scroll up. Um, I, I think Shabir wanted to uh, pitch as well. That's oh, sorry, did I, miss, did I miss somebody's name? Hi, uh, this is Shabir. Uh, I'm from Kuwait, basically. Okay, welcome. I um, actually uh, have been working in Kuwait the uh, last uh, 15 years. Uh, I plan to migrate from Kuwait to Canada. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that is the reason uh, I'm here right now. Uh, actually, I'm in the IT field. I, have, I hold a PhD in computer science in the information technology. 
Uh, basically, I'm Oracle developer, and I'm, currently I'm working as uh, IT manager in Kuwait. Uh, I'm looking a uh, good opportunity from your side. If anybody uh, giving good opportunity, I would be grateful to you. Thank you very much. Great question. Yeah, I don't know if any of our speakers today know um, about companies or if they themselves are hiring international job candidates. Van Hack would be a good place to uh, to start. Van Hack. Yeah. Do, do you mind typing the name into the yes. chat just so our audience can see? I've actually never heard of them. Are they a tech company? They're a company that uh, helps placing international folks into uh, okay. employment here in British mm -hmm. Columbia. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I know um, just from talking to can job candidates uh, from abroad, it is difficult to find work inside Canada if you're outside mm -hmm. of Canada. It's much more like easier if you're in Canada and you have uh, like an open work permit or some kind of status here in Canada, like for example, if you're a student and, you're, uh, and you have a study permit, you can work 20 hours a week. It's much easier to find work if you're already inside of Canada. But there are companies who do hire, um, like they recruit from abroad. So I, I wouldn't give up hope, Shabir, but it, it is, I think, more difficult in, uh, if you're in QA um, at, at this point in time. So it's, it's important just, just to know your options and, uh, and to know the realities of finding work in Canada. Okay, Van Hack. Okay, perfect. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so while we're waiting for um, people to type their own questions in or to raise their hand, let me just throw a question out to all three of you. Are your companies or are any of the companies that you work with currently hiring, for example, junior talent versus senior talent? Uh, we do get that question a lot because um, uh, we do we do attract a lot of students to these panels so they want to know if companies are hiring junior talent and as as you know it's hard to get your foot in the door but once you know you get your foot in the door you can get that experience that will help you to um, you know move to to different positions yeah so I'll jump in on that right away at pocketed we usually hire um, interns and new grads um, I'm going to say kind of lining up with the semester schedule. So we have um, two new interns in digital marketing starting in January. So if you are a student, whether you're on like the marketing, customer support, sales side, or you're on the tech side, check out the pocketed website kind of like in the middle of the semester, keep an eye on us or follow us on social, and we'll post all of those opportunities. Um, yeah, it is so great to work with, um, you know, either students who are on like an internship or a co-op program or new grads to kind of help them build their career. And the great part about being um, new to the workforce and in a startup is that it lets you wear so many hats. So you mm -hmm. can kind of figure out like what you really love to do and what you maybe don't want to do. So a great way to kind of help you figure things out when you're just getting started. Awesome. And, and do you find that there are like specific companies out there who like are hiring more senior talent? I've, I've met with several um, job seekers who, you know, they're, they're in their fifties, um, maybe even like towards retirement and they're in tech, but they're finding it hard to, uh, you know, to show their experience or to convince hiring managers to even take a shot at them. Um, despite all the years of experience they have because maybe because of their age and this is what they've been speculating but uh yeah if you have any advice about that or if you know any companies that you know don't care they'll hire anybody regardless of of age and experience yeah so i, I think i can take a i can answer that I, I yeah like there are actually a lot of applicants to commit program like rep program who like it's less about age it's really their past experience because I mean, just the technology skill set, it evolves really fast, right? You know, like, yeah, it's every five years, there's a new wave of tech, you know, technical skill set people need to pick up, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets outdated pretty quickly. I think it's uh, it's been definitely particularly hard. For, for example, people coming from, you know, the oil and the gas space or the financial sector in the kind of, you know, kind of traditional financial sector, you know, with a very kind of uh, traditional skill set, it, it's it, and then uh, you look at uh, startups, um, tech companies. They uh, they usually adopt newer technologies, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you know th th those became uh, uh, particularly hard for people to adapt. You know the success examples I've seen is you know for engineer like for. 
for people coming from that background, they kind of stay up to date on what's going on, mm-hmm. even working yeah. on personal side project, you know, showing, showcasing, you know, their open source contribution on GitHub, right? Mm-hmm. So just to just to really make sure to, to illustrate that they are staying up to date, you know, what's going yeah. on today, right? You know, they have a lot more success than uh, than than not than than those who don't, right? Mm-hmm. So so that would be my suggestion. It, okay. it is. I think we just have to acknowledge it is particularly hard, mm-hmm. but you know, if you put some effort in, mm-hmm. um, it's it's solvable. And I totally. think that's such valuable advice is that um, if you're working in a company or in an industry that is um, not quite as fast paced as using more legacy tools, no matter what department you're in, um, I always encourage people of this too. They're like, well, you know, my company doesn't use like a fancy marketing system or, mm-hmm. you know, a CRM or anything like that. There are, there are free videos that you can watch. You can like play around with like free Salesforce or HubSpot or, mm-hmm. you know, the equivalent in developer tools to keep your skill set up to date and not only rep- only relying on your, um, on your company to kind of provide those experiences for you. And it's the kind of thing, like, I mean, this is not like spend 10 hours a week, you know, um, necessarily learning a new skill, but kind of carving out um, that time where you can to, you know, keep on top of what's happening in your industry. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it can be frustrating as um, somebody who's working in like an industry that is a little bit more legacy to kind of feel like you're being left behind. But um, like Bear said, there are some great options to kind of keep on top of things and um, just be able to, you know, be aware and kind of interact with those new technologies that are out there. Great tips. I, this is really valuable advice. Thank you for sharing that. I saw that we got a question uh, for Bayer in the chat. Raul, do you want to jump on screen and, and ask your question? Yeah, sure. Why not? <clears throat> I'll hide them. Tie for there. So my question is that uh, uh, do, do you just supporting the software engineers and connecting them to startups or you uh, can support the other competencies like project managers, um, I don't know, uh, coordinators or uh, mentors, okay, to support you, to, to connect them with the other startups? Great question. Yeah, good, yeah, good, very good question. Yeah, let me, we are a startup ourselves. So so we start a company with a focus and that focus is software engineer for, at this time. But absolutely, you know, we, we felt like, you know, once we figure out this system, then we can help other kind of competency, product management, product design, project management, um, you know, like QA, you know, quality assurance. Like there's a lot of fun job functions that we felt like we can set up systems to support. Mm-hmm. And and these are pretty, yeah, these are, I call it hard problems because we are this pretty high stake human career problem. <laughs> so, so we treat it very seriously. So not trying to, you know, kind of branch out too, too quick, too soon. Um, but that being said, you know, if uh, I'm happy to, like, we, we have people coming from different, you know, uh, uh, competency reaching out to us, you know, um, and we always keep an eye out on, you know, the, the, the companies that we work with. So feel free to comment, connect me on LinkedIn and tell me about the type of companies you're interested in. You know, I'm happy to keep an eye out on, you know, on just different, like, it seems like a project management background, you know, I know some of the bigger size companies. It's definitely something that they look for, right? Thank you. Thank Thanks you. For thank sharing. you very much. Mm-hmm. I hope that answered your question, Raul. And for some of the folks that may not be in technology right now, but mm-hmm. uh, want to get into the tech, you know, to upskill or reskill uh, the, the abilities, there's a program, uh, an organization called Palette Skills. I'll, I'll actually put that in the chat. Oh, cool. Palette Skills. I haven't yeah. heard of this one. Yeah. So they, uh, they will. You know, if you apply through the program, I think it's a, a program that doesn't cost uh, anything. But they will work with potential employers, find out uh, you know what 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 kind of skills uh, that the employees, what kind of employees they need, mm-hmm. and then they will take you through a training program and then place you into employment with those employees as well. Mm-hmm. I've just put that uh, the uh, website on the on the chat as well. Perfect. Thanks, Bragua. Um, I, I guess I've, I've got another question for the two of you since uh, Bear's just run to, to go get his kids. Um, our, audience, um, our audience often ask questions about interview tips. So I was wondering if you have any 
interview or public speaking skill tips that you can give to our, our job candidates today in our audience? Um, because I think that's one of the, the big kind of fears and struggles that job seekers have is how do, how do I sell myself? How do I present myself in, a, in an interview? How do I get hired or how do I convince other people to, you know, to buy me as, as the product? Um, do you have any tips for our, our job candidates today on, on how to present themselves? I can start, but I think Casey would be the one that has uh, all the right answers. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Since I've gone through a bit of hiring in our company in, in, in the last uh, few months, just to provide some opportunities for uh, students to uh, you know, come and work for an organization and get some real life uh, and a working experience for the reason we hired a few. But the thing that, and I've hired uh, thousands of people in my sort of, I've been an entrepreneur uh, for, uh, for my whole working life. So been through this process of hiring multiple times. And what I find is, uh, you know, the, the most, the people that get, uh, are very successful in getting a job, they are very, mm -hmm. you know, basic fundamental things that you need to do. But I think people go beyond that. They start to do different things because they believe that this might help. But I think if you, number one thing is, you know, do a lot of research and you really need to know the organization. That's, that's so key and, and fundamental. Mm -hmm. Doing your background research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a background research. If I'm applying, you know, to commit uh, for a position <laughs> there, then I need to do all my research to be able to know who Bear is, you know, um, how many employees they have, what kind of business, where the customers are, where the offices mm -hmm. are located. So as, if I'm having an interview and I can very intelligently, or at least I'll get an idea about what the business is rather than kind of like, you know, Bear tells me that I'm, we have an office in New York, it kind of all feels foreign to me. That shouldn't be, it should, I should know and say, yeah, I know that, you know, this is how you operate. So that's the first thing. And people don't sometimes forget to do that or they just don't think it's valuable. The, the, the second thing is I found in, in you know, the written um, resumes are all fine, but on a one-to-one, -one inter one in-person interviews, people don't seem to be as relaxed. And it's, mm -hmm. I, I totally mm -hmm. understand it. I've, uh, you know, been, I, I do that myself. And very stressful. <laughs> but, yeah, it's very stressful, but you need to find a way to, uh, you know, to, 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 to relax. And then the third thing, so, so relax, so you're having a you know, much nicer conversation. And what I found is if you're not, if you're very tense, you're not sometimes mm -hmm. even getting the questions, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so you're not probably maybe answering the right way and, and, and then you lose the interview, right? So mm -hmm. if you relax a bit, uh, I think you really understand, you know, what they're asking, what the context is, and you you can reply, you know, in that uh, in the right uh, manner. So, so, what's the best tip to lose that nervous energy in, in an interview? I think everybody has sort of a, a, a different, uh, um, you know, style. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, having you know before sort of the formal part, if you have that opportunity, we can create that opportunity mm -hmm. to have a bit of a chat. It usually sort of a unofficial chat rather than just sitting there and waiting for the interviewer to start and do the formal uh, be proactive and just kind of you know saying hi and just start a chat and I think that creates a little bit of that uh, brings the nerves down anyway mm -hmm. I think I think you build a even if it's like 20 seconds 30 seconds I think <laughs> a relationship you know that built and you start to feel comfortable that's just one way but there's multiple mm -hmm. ways uh, tips that uh, I'm pretty sure is out there that uh, uh, that helps. And then the third thing I think is where a lot of people go wrong is they're not, they don't, they try and um, oversell or try and say what they're not. I mean, just being genuine, honest, transparent goes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a long way. Those are the kinds of things that I look for. And, but I'll leave it to, uh, to Casey and Bear to uh, provide some real good professional feedback. So, so just to, just to fill oh, Bear in, we're, we're just talking about interview tips. Interview tips, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds good. <laughs> Excellent. So I thought um, you had some great tips there. And I think a lot of it, um, one of the things to remember is if you get to the interview stage, like the mm -hmm. company wants to hire you. Um, from like a hiring manager's point of view, um, it takes up a lot of time to go through resumes and to do like the phone screen and set up the interview. So by the time somebody is, you know, sitting across the screen from me, like I want them to do well. So that I can hire them and we can go on to, you know, 
getting back to, uh, you know, building the company and helping customers. So um, the person across from you is usually like cheering you on inside, even if you can't see it. And I think one of the, one of the challenges is um, while there are a lot of opportunities out there, there are also a lot of people looking. So um, it, being able to stand out is so important. And I'm going to say like, you see all these examples of people who, you know, like do all this like big stunt type stuff. You don't need to do that to stand out. All you need to do. So usually in our application forms, we ask like, why do you want to work at Pocketed? And mm -hmm. out of the last um, job posting we had up um, that had maybe like 300 applicants, maybe under 5% of people filled that out. So if you didn't fill out like the, why do you want to work at Pocketed? Like we did not even scroll down to your resume. So it's a little thing like that, that really helps you stand out. And like Ragwa said, doing that, like, why do you want to work at our company in particular? Like, do some research, talk about, you know, your founder's story is re really inspiring. I really like the problem you're solving for customers. Um, get to know the company that you're applying for. And even when you're applying for tons of jobs, taking that five minutes to go to their website and actually answer the question is what's really going to put you ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in terms of just being comfortable, like the, the switch to remote um, has been great for a lot of reasons, but having um, interviews remotely can be nerve wracking for a lot of people, especially if you are not used to doing online presentations or meetings or anything like that. It's not, um, it's not intuitive. So as cheesy as it is, I would say definitely practice. I've mm -hmm. set up many Zoom calls with myself where I record it and just kind of like answer questions. The nice part about Zoom is that you can have like your answers printed out, like your, your notes beside you. So you can take a minute to like grab a sip of water and just glance down and be like, oh yes, a time I answered, I dealt with a difficult situation was, and then kind of go on that story. So kind of using remote to your advantage but honestly, don't feel um, uh, bad about just practicing. Um, and it's not so much as long as you have like a mostly quiet place to take the interview. I know a lot of us are working from home with, you know, our families or roommates or that kind of thing. As long as you have like a mostly quiet space, if somebody walks behind you, like um, good companies aren't going to care about that stuff. <laughs> We're all doing the best we can. But um, yeah, definitely do some um practice presentations, practice answering questions, um, not so that you sound rehearsed, just so you get comfortable speaking into a camera and kind of just mm -hmm. like staring at yourself for an hour, which is a very um, not intuitive thing for a lot of people. Yeah, that's, I, I would totally agree with what you just said, Casey. Those are really, some really great tips. Yeah, because talking on screen, it definitely isn't intuitive. And uh, it's, it's a whole new skill that we've all been Oh, learning. exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to, to talk, uh, to talk into a microphone, you know, to make sure that the top half of us looks good. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a whole other skill. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bear, did you have any tips you wanted to, to add to that? For, yeah, I mean, for yeah, I, I, yeah, I think both, both Rakwa and uh, Casey brought up a lot of great points. I, I think, no, like I think I mean Zoom meeting, like Zoom interview, online interview, like definitely there's the aspect where okay, this is new to me. What do I do? But there's also but there's the the bright side as well, right? You know, it's uh you know, you're not in a room like being interrogated, you know, with lights on <laughs> above you. You know, this is more like, you know, yeah, we can be more relaxed, right? Like I can I don't mind to share my background, you know, like mm -hmm. just we are human just talking to humans right so so i think in a way you can make yourself relaxed mm -hmm. um and i think you know fundamentally it's just interviews like you're the employer or so the hiring manager come in with the, in the position of power right and then uh the, the 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 interviewee come in from the position of weakness and if if that's how you think about it then psychologically you are you are you're on yeah like you, you're on the wrong position you're in the mm -hmm. wrong spot right so I think I think I think I would uh, suggest everyone to turn that table around, right? Mm -hmm. they think about yourself coming into the position, uh, coming into the interview mm -hmm. in the position of power, right? So I think obviously mentioned mentioned early on, you know, how do you prepare the interview? Do your research, you know, mm -hmm. like prepare, like get understand the level one information, which is the general company information, like you know exactly mentioned, right? whatever you can search from the Google or from, from the internet, right? But then uh, 
prepare with a list of level two questions, which is more mm-hmm. in depth, right? Think about, you know, how the business works, how do they make money, how mm-hmm. they how why their customers love their product. Like I think asking a lot of a lot of in-depth questions put you into position of power because mm-hmm. now you're interrogating them, not the other way around. Right. And then I think the third thing to to to, to think about is um like don't yeah I mean don't be too worried about losing that opportunity. Right, you know, like I think it's important for you to find the opportunity that 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 take you who you are, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and also really kind of a great fit for you, right? If you tr- you if you show tr- your true self, your your mm-hmm. value, your culture, your your ability, and and then the the company take you in, then that's a great match, right? So so I think you know just if the company decline you. You know, think about it the other way around. Actually, mm-hmm. you are declining them, right? It's it's a, it's always a mutual thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I think if you change that perspective, you 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 start feeling like you're you're more in power, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, re- after the interview, reflect you know reflect on what happened, right? How did it go? Like did it go well? And if not, what like how I can do better next time? Always reflect. Always kind of iterate. You know, uh, 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 take the lessons from the previous interview. Like I, I guarantee you, you just feel better, more and more confident. You know, the next one, the next one. Then yeah, then you'll be in the position of power, and I think that will give a lot of confidence. You know, uh, uh, moving into the next interview. I really like that. Like yeah, turning, flipping the tables, and putting yourself into the shoe of the interviewer, uh, and, and and kind of going along with that. Like as a company, what what kinds of questions would you want to have candidates ask you at an interview? Um, for example, like the top two or three questions, what, what would be interesting to you as a company? What, what would you want candidates to ask you? I think like, don't be afraid to challenge, um, to ask those more challenging questions, especially in startups, asking how do you make money mm-hmm. is um, <laughs> something that is an awkward question for a lot of people. Yeah. But as an employee, as a potential employee, like this is important to you. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like when, I like when, a, when somebody asks me that question, because it means, they care enough about what we're doing. And it's like, hey, you know what? If I were mm-hmm. to join you, like wh- what's the long-term plan for this, right? Um, so don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. And um, especially like to build on what Bayer said, like the the culture fit and those kind of things are so important. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually like, like I enjoy when ch- uh, client not clients, um, in like job candidates, job candidates. Yes. Ask me about like, what, um, what's our biggest strength as a company, but mm-hmm. also like, what are, what are the biggest challenges? Um, or what are, what are some of the challenges that we're working to fix, you know, over the next year or so, like mm-hmm. being able to ask those bigger picture questions. Um, and then you will learn a lot about the company and about the culture by the answers to, um, to those questions and kind of realizing like what space you're getting into and a little bit of that, what the day-to-day life is like. So don't be afraid to ask challenging questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, if you've done, hopefully you've done your research before going into there. So you can always say like, Hey, you know what? I read this article that featured, you know, your CTO and they were talking about this. Like, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, that project that you're working on? Great ideas. Great tips. Thank you, Casey. And anyone else? Uh, any questions you would like to hear from a job candidate during an interview? The ones that I, I, I think uh, Casey and Bill put it very, very nicely. I think those questions are very important. You know, if you have the finance side, I think is important. So mm-hmm. I mean, it gets you the uh, interviewer thinking that the, that the uh, you know the potential candidate is actually thinking about the viability of the company and where mm-hmm. you know, the money is going to come from. So I think anything on that finance side and how do you make money and all, all the kind of stuff. You don't want to go too much detail and ask <laughs> what was your profitability last year, but maybe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the sales and revenue, you know, the market and stuff like that. I think that's a really mm-hmm. important part. And then the second part, I think, is on the culture side. Mm-hmm. Is um, once you start talking about that, I think people uh, interviews like that is you know a simple question like you know how long has you is your um, longest employee been with you? Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of gets them thinking, you know, like that. Um, uh, that's to a me, good one. Be, yeah, like this guy's you know a person is kind of thinking about longer term. So uh, those are I, I think areas where. It, it may help. Like I, as as an interviewer, as an employer, I always focus on on attitude mm-hmm. and less on the skills. 
Mm-hmm. Skills is important and it matters, but in my opinion, I can teach somebody the skills, mm-hmm. but I can't teach them the attitude. So I kind of, I kind of, so as an interviewer, that's sort of where my mindset comes from. And if you can happen to know, you know, what they're thinking, you can craft a bit of the questioning based on, you know, where the interviewer is sitting as well. Great suggestions. Thank you. All right. I do have uh, another question about LinkedIn. Um, often candidates wonder how, like, how important is LinkedIn for hiring managers and for companies? Like, should they be updating their LinkedIn regularly? Should they even have a LinkedIn uh, versus uh, like a paper resume? What are, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I can, I can, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, LinkedIn is, um, it's where, People go to first, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's also where you know recruiters use to search for candidates, right? Yeah. So if if, if your information is up, it's not up to date, people can't even find you anymore, right? So mm-hmm. so so absolutely, stay active, actively uh, uh, update your LinkedIn profile. You know, focus on the accomplishments that you made. You know, the the experience that you have, and uh, yeah, also, I mean, if you go to, if you want to go that extra mile, you know share your thoughts, work out loud mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, you know, do some posts, mm-hmm. right? You know, uh, or, or repost the people that you follow that you really enjoy, fo- yeah, like their content, right? Like just, mm-hmm. you know, give, yeah, just to let people learn more about yourself, your, your, your true self, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's always important. Um, but then, uh, you know, at least important to a certain degree, you know, it's yeah. how people would find you and get a, a high level understanding about you. But, you know, what really you know, get you an interview is really relevancy, right? You know, mm-hmm. for example, I, you know, when I look at browse candidate profiles, I quickly check out LinkedIn, but then uh, I would still use resume and cover letter to mm-hmm. find relevant information, particularly for what I'm hiring for, right? You know, like mm-hmm. I, some general, you know, 20, 30 second I scan through the whole profile. And then I will, then uh, the next thing I do is pick out the part that, that interests me, right? So mm-hmm. if you apply for a job, you know, and you send a g- generic cover letter and the resume, that will get lost, like pretty much mm-hmm. guaranteed, mm-hmm. right? But if you really put your time on it and, and think about the position, like what are the key points they're hiring for? And you mm-hmm. highlight your experience, you know, related to that, that's absolutely critical and give you a chance. Otherwise, you know, pretty much you can forget it. Like I, I it just from my experience, with generic profile like application is very hard to be noticed. Okay, good to know. Oh, Casey, you were gonna say something. Yeah, so I'll second just from like a pure logistics point of view. Mm-hmm. Definitely keep your LinkedIn up to date because it is much easier to send a LinkedIn update to your team <laughs> saying like, hey. I interviewed this person. I really like them. I'm going to have them in for a second call rather than like downloading the resume from like your applicant tracking system, figuring out how to do that, asking the HR lady, like, how do you do that again? Um, (laughs) Like I just send out the LinkedIn and say like, Hey, this is who we're meeting with. And then we're able to do all the, you know, formal stuff down the road with like downloading the resume and that kind of stuff. But it's super easy to share a LinkedIn profile, um, Mm -hmm. whether you're interviewing or like if you're asking for a recommendation or that kind of thing. Um, so really important to keep that up to date. Okay, excellent, excellent tips. I hope everyone's listening to this. Um, and and for cover letters, I've heard mixed responses from hiring managers. Like um, some just don't have the time to read cover letters. So are cover letters important for startups, um, or is it you know startups are too busy starting up to to read all these cover letters? Yeah, I mean uh, unless you are referred to me by like a, a someone I really trust, then yeah, mm-hmm. cover letter doesn't matter anymore. But okay. if, if, if it's just a, a candidate, you know, like an applicant that I'm checking out, you know, cover letter is definitely very important, right? So, uh, so yeah, so I would say, I mean, obviously if you're applying for 50 jobs, you, you probably can't do all like, then in that case, you just really simply prioritize, you know, what is the top three or five you know, uh, uh, positions that re- you really, really love, right? Then mm-hmm. just prioritize those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a hundred percent to that. And it's not. I mean, you're thinking, okay, do I need to like personalize fifty cover letters? <laughs> so you just have, you know, um, like Bayer said, your top companies that you want to work for, or um, just kind of have. Okay, if I'm pl- these are my three main industries I want to apply for. So if I'm applying to like a financial job, I use this cover letter. If I'm applying to like a tech job, 
I use this cover letter, like having um, specializing based on like industry or role or whatever might work for you. Okay, good. Good to know. Whatever, um, whatever you do, okay. make sure whatever you write, nobody's got time to read 10 pages these days. So try and be as crisp and get your message out in a short yes. form as possible. Yeah. Keep that in mind. And resumes uh, should only be like one to two pages max. Yeah, I would say even just keep it one page. <laughs> one page, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the shorter, the it better. Actually, yeah, it, yeah. Is that, yeah it, it actually, you know, yeah, yeah it kind of calls me for like, it gives it, it calls me another brain cycle to flip a page. <laughs> <laughs> Much work. <laughs> Okay. Well, um, since we don't have any more questions coming in from our audience, I'm going to wrap, start to wrap this panel up for today. So um, for um, Bayer, Casey, Ragba, I'll let you add any last remarks or words of advice to our audience before, um, yeah, we start to wrap up. Don't give up. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> don't give up. A lot of opportunities over there. Do as much research as you can and talk to as many people as you can and connect. Yes, with. networking. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll just um, second that. It is, there's definitely a large part of job hunting that is just a numbers game. So mm -hmm. you're going to apply for a lot of things that you think you'd be the perfect fit for, and you probably would, but for one reason or another, um, your application doesn't, uh, make it to the next step. So just keep trying. Um, and uh, yeah, don't be afraid to kind of um, say why you want to work for that company in particular. And uh, yeah, work your connections too. If you know somebody <laughs> that works at that company, don't be afraid to reach out and uh, ask if they have a referral program or something like that. Mm 